I've made a terrible, terrible mistake and I need to set the record straight and that's why I posted this video. A couple of days ago I said that I would rather pick the Mac Mini M1 over the M2. So first of all, I had no idea that that video would blow up. This is just a very simple tech vlog where I talk about tech and stuff like that. I had no idea that would get so many views and there was a little bit of criticism, not all of it, but some criticism. And so in this video, I just wanted to give it to you straight. Like there's something you need to understand about why I said what I did. Now, it is true that I see no reason to upgrade the Mac mini M1 to get, you know, the M2 version or the M2 Pro because I am very pleased with the performance of the Mac mini M1. And I did sort of mention the benefits of the M2 and stuff like that. But when I made that video, I was under the assumption that the M1 Mac mini is cheaper than the M2 Mac mini. Turns out that this is only here in Europe. I live in Sweden, so here in Sweden, the M2 Mac mini is actually cost pretty much the same as when the Mac mini M1 was first released. And so I had no idea that in America, in the United States, you actually get the M2 version cheaper like, and especially if you're a student, you get it even cheaper, like something like $500. It's insane. So obviously, if you're in a position to get the M2 Mac Mini, you should definitely get it. I will, however, say that if you do find the Mac Mini M1 cheaper on, say, Amazon or eBay, you know, I still think that it's a very good product. It's by far one of my favorite Apple products to ever ever be released. Like I, I'm a huge fan of the Mac mini. It's just amazing. And the M2 is better. Like I did sort of see in the comment section that a lot of people were sort of explaining and telling me something that I already knew, by the way, that the base storage is actually a lot slower, like the 256 gigabyte versus the 512. And even compared to the 256 on the Mac mini M1, it's actually it's probably the reason why it's cheaper, but the main point is that it's slower. It's like half the speed. Like this is something like 3000 megabytes per second read and write speed. And on the Mac mini M2, it's half the speed, which is weird. But again, I think it was just cheaper for Apple to do so. And so it was probably a good deal for Apple to make the Mac mini M1. And also I really don't see an issue because I can imagine that most people who get the base model of the Mac mini, they don't really, they would never notice that difference. Like it's, it's twice the speed performance, but you can't see it here on YouTube or, you know, if you're browsing the web, like you're not going to watch videos faster. They're not going to load faster because of that. Now, if you transfer video files and stuff like that, sure. If you edit videos and you import, export, there might be some, like a few seconds, I would say, difference, but not a whole lot. And I've done extensive testing when it comes to this. Like a lot of people think that you're going to export a lot faster if you have like a really fast uh, hard drive. And it's just not the truth because it's actually the processing of the video file itself. that That's the biggest factor of the export speed, so to speak. No, I, I think that for most people that slight decrease, like it's a, it's a big decrease if you think about it, it's half the speed, right? But it's in reality, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. And you know, I've said this back in the day in the past when the first SSDs came out, uh, they were so much faster than regular hard drives. Like that was a huge difference. And I could understand why people upgraded to SSD. Like well, I was one of the first people to upgrade to uh, SSD. I love SSD. Everything I have, I, I have no regular hard drives left. Like hard drives are a thing of the past. But once you sort of reach the, the shores of SSD, it doesn't really matter if you have 500 megabytes per second or 1000 megabytes or 2000 or 3000. It's just the difference is not that impressive anymore beyond that certain point. I suppose it's sort of like the law of diminishing results, you know, something like that. I'm, I noticed that Marquez Brownlee, MKBHD, talks about that a lot. Yeah, I would agree with him when it comes to this, when it comes to SSDs. Anyway, 
The Mac Mini M2 is a fantastic machine. If it's cheaper, if you live in the US, you should definitely get it. Don't get it, get my words twisted. I think it's a fantastic machine. And I've tested out the M2 on the MacBook Pro, okay? So uh, that is a fantastic little CPU. And the form factor, you know, on the Mac Mini, so great, it's not overheating. It's so cold, it's so smooth to edit videos and stuff like that. Um, but I suppose that if I was to be completely honest, if I was to get the Mac Mini M2, I would actually get the M2 Pro. And it's actually not for the CPU itself, it's actually just for the fact that you get something like four Thunderbolt ports. Like I think that's truly astounding that they've managed to put that in there. Uh, like it's, it's such a huge form factor. Now don't get me wrong, I love the form factor except that I wish that uh, there was a little card reader here, like on the Mac Studio, that would be just so awesome. And I do wish, I suppose, maybe that there was an on switch here, but this is just a beautiful piece of design, right? The Mac Mini. It hasn't changed in a really long time. And the reason I know that is because in 2012, I bought my first Mac and it actually was a Mac Mini. And believe it or not, but it had the exact same freaking design as this Mac Mini. Although, if memory serves me correctly, it actually had a card reader. Anyway, this casing is so big that it could have been a lot thinner, which I'm, again, I'm not complaining, but it just feels like it's a lot of unused space. Like they could put in a lot of stuff here, more ports, SD card reader, a micro SD card reader, like Apple is never gonna do that. It, it goes against their whole design philosophy, I suppose, but it's a great piece of machine. And there are a lot of hubs, and I've talked about them in some of my videos. There's a lot of cool hubs that you can attach to your Mac mini. So far, unfortunately, I haven't found a good one. I've tested the popular Satoshi hub. It's just trash. It's just complete and utter trash for people like me. Like it, technically it works. So it do, it's not trash like it doesn't work, but it's trash because the speed of it is just so slow. You know, it doesn't have support for the latest M2 SSDs and the card reader is like really slow. The USB-C on the front is just slow. So it's just not worth it. Um, but for most people, I suppose that the Satoshi hub is perfectly reasonable to have. Just wanted to mention a couple of thoughts about the, the video that I made a couple of days ago. Um, yeah, those are just some of my thoughts about, you know, the whole M1 versus M2, just so you don't get the words twisted here. So I suppose you could say that this video is a bit of a sequel, a bit of a follow-up to the first video that I posted on this topic. More videos coming. Stay tuned. Sounds so silly when you say it out loud, but yeah. Okay, take care.